Computers. What, what are they, really? This is a question that a lot of people ask themselves, and today I think I will be answering that question for some of you. And, and we'll get started. We'll, I'll literally give you all a walkthrough of how this works, and uh, teach you everything I know so far about computers. In front of us is a few... Well, it is just the one chart. This, this chart here. Does that look... Well, this may look familiar to some of you, but... It may be a little confusing to some of you. So, the red wool represents a zero. And the orange wool represents a one. So where, wherever there is a, you know, a zero, that it means this one is a, this one's zero, because this is the first number. First number is zero. The last number is 16. This is the farthest you can count in four bits, technically. In a four bit word, you can only count up to 16, technically. Technically speaking, you can go from 0 to 16. So, how does a machine count up from, you know, these numbers? How does it go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, ah, oh, that's 16. I just count too fast, okay? How does it do that? Well, simply put it, we need logic gates. Logic gates. What do they do? What are these guys? These are not the right logic gates. These guys are wrong, and I learned that eventually. But these are my prototypes. I'll show you those in a second. Logic gates. What are logic gates? What do they do? You take an input, and you can compare it to another input. You can do things with it. The most simplest logic gate that I have ever learned. The OR gate. This. Or that. Then there's the AND gate. Which you need three torches for this one. But it compares this one, so if that one is on, well, then this whole circuit will still be off. But if they're they're both on, then this will still be off. So they n both need to be the same in order for something to happen. They both need to toggle on. The opposite would be the... Is it, is it an X and? X and? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I, it, it, the opposite would be this, where it's always on, unless both of these are turned on. But one of the most important gates by far is this one, the XOR gate. What does the XOR gate do? Well, if you take two of the same signals, they they will never turn on. If you take one signal, for example this signal, then it will turn on. But if you take the signal over here and turn it on, then it all has to turn off. So it can never be the same for both inputs, which is quite interesting. And that is where the basis for this whole thing comes from. So here I have a truth table. It's a little confusing, but where there's white, that is, this this is this column's A, this column's B, this column is the, the sum, and this one is whether it needs to carry or not. And how do we know when it needs to carry a digit? Well, when there is two ones, it needs to carry a one over to the next section. So that's why I have it green. I co always color color with the section that's carrying green. So let's begin. Uh, for this one, we have two falses, which gives us two falses over here. We now have to have a true and a false, which also needs to give us... Is this right? I don't remember this being this way. But it, it needs to be true for it having a digit there. This one also needs to be true for having a digit. But then this one needs to have a digit and then carry a digit over. Well, not really have a digit and carry the digit over. It just needs to... I think it just needs to have the digit. I don't know. I think I might got these wrong, but... Uh, basically, this thing does all of that. And we'll get over that in a second. But first, I'll have to show you guys my failures at this. So my first failures, and the biggest mistake I made, was that I was using the wrong gate. I thought this was a Zor gate, or an XOR gate. I'm gonna call it the Zor gate. It sounds cool. It, basically, the system, uh, it's, it's really bad. It's really, really bad. Watch this. Um, I'm sure if you know what you're doing, this is, this is gonna be a pain for you to watch this part, but, um, yeah, this one doesn't even work. What the heck is this? Ah, carry. Okay, there we go. See, that's the carry signal. I had to... You don't start with a carry signal. You don't... Oh, ah, this doesn't work. Okay? So, that was the first prototype. My second prototype is over here. We'll go ahead and demonstrate this thing. This one's a little better, but I had to... I, I tried something new on this one, because I wasn't sure what was causing the problem. And in this one, it actually carries the signal over to the next one, but it carries it through 
the A and the B. You don't need that. You you only compare two statements. You don't carry the next statement and use that to compare for your next statement. That That's not what you want. But finally, I had a major breakthrough when I started looking at the gates and seeing what gates I was using. And it turned out I was using this gate instead of this gate. Which is what led to my next breakthrough and I immediately was able to build this thing. So I'll go ahead and give you a demonstration real quick. So this one is on, but if both leathers turn on, then that light will light up and that means it's carrying the signal over. So boom, it carried the signal over to the next one. Now this one turns off when it carries the signal, unfortunately. However, I do believe if we set up a an, another carrier signal over here, that is what we need to do to fix this, so it like can still turn that one on. I'll, I'll fix that in a second. But anyway, um, if we turn this one on now, it's carrying over to there because that light was on. Hold on, let me let me go ahead and demonstrate that again. So see that lamp is on, but when this one turns on, it's going to activate one of these two AND gates and cause that one to turn on. So it carries the signal from here to here because we added a 1 over here. Now if we add another 1 over here, this will cause the same thing to happen. So it moves it over. If we turn both of these on, and then we turn... That, that will mean that one's on, and it's carrying over to the next one. So if both of them are on and it's carrying over to the next one, then we just need to flip one switch over here to carry the number over to there. Which, for some reason, this one's broken. Oh, I didn't plug it in, apparently. Whoops. I should have been more careful. But as you can see, this is how you carry a single digit over. Very simple. Now, I don't have a machine that can activate this and run the system yet. However, once I do, I will have my first 4-bit system. That is, that is the goal. So, I hope I was able to explain that decently well. I'm pretty sure that I've skimmed over a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are very important to the system. And, um, yeah, in the future I will do... I'll make some more episodes of this. I'm not... not really, uh... I don't really make technical videos very much, but, uh... This is something that is interesting to me, and I wanted to share it with you all. And I feel like you all could benefit from learning this. It's cool. And it, it maybe not, maybe not really. But it's, it's still cool and you can apply it in Minecraft. So, yeah. If you all have enjoyed today's uh, episode, found it useful, maybe, uh, you know, please consider liking and subscribing. If you guys got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. I'll see you all next time. And hopefully, in the next episode of this, I'm going to have this whole setup able to do something interesting. Where it's able to count from 1 to 16. Well, not 1 to 16. Maybe 1 to 16. This could count from there.